More than 20 million Americans suffer from some sort of peripheral neuropathy. This is an uncomfortable burning or numbing sensation in the feet and legs. With us today is Dr. Amir Shokre, a neurologist at St. Joseph's Hospital in Orange, California. Amir, thanks for coming. Thanks for asking. You know, I see so many patients in my office who complain of this numbness and burning sensation in their, mainly in their legs, but sometimes in their hands. So exactly what's going on with them? You know, that's a, neuropathy is basically means the dysfunction of the nerves. Mm -hmm. And the peripheral neuropathy means that anything wrong from nerves coming out of the small cord in the nerves, coming down, going to the limbs, or the same in the arms. That's a degeneration of the nerve fibers, which usually starts in the distal part, which is basically the uh, longest portion of the nerves in the toes, in the feet, and it starts climbing up gradually over time. So it tends to start in the toes upwards and in the fingers upward. Toes, ball of the feet is uh, usually the beginning point. Initially is intermittent, then becomes more constant, then moves up to the ankle and stays below the knees usually. So it's kind of like stockings in, exactly, in gloves. Exactly, that's what they call it, the yeah. stocking. When it starts in the hands and the fingertips comes to the wrist, that's called gloves, and then we call it stocking glove distribution. And it starts in the legs more because you said the nerves are, are longer. Longer there. and they're a smaller caliber, like they've been pulled a little bit longer. So they have a smaller caliber, they are more susceptible to injuries or dysfunction. Why is it so common? I mean, 20 million people it sounds like an accurate number to me because I see yeah. so many people with this. What, what are the causes of you know, this? You know, it so the common? most common cause is, uh, is the mo what we call the acquired type of neuropathy rather than genetic, which is very small numbers. Mm -hmm. This acquired uh, type of neuropathy is uh, the most common cause is diabetes, hyperglycemia, or pre diabetic state. So, people who have high blood sugars going, uh, hyperglycemia, where their blood sugars are high all the time there's some kind of, it damages the nerve some way. Exactly, I've seen people in my office that they come in with symptoms of neuropathy, numbness, tingling, weakness of the legs, and then and they say, no, my sugar is fine, I'm not taking, I'm not diabetic, but we check their sugar is marginally high. And that's kind of a precursor to developing neuropathy or developing diabetes even. So the first symptom is probably neuropathy, Five years from now, you'll have a full-blown diabetes. So you have diabetes, and what other things cause this? Uh, here in the United States, is diabetes is the most common cause, followed by alcohol. It has a second probably most common cause, and also followed by a form of neuropathy. We call it autoimmune. Uh, the most common type, which people end up in a hospital and ER, is called Guillain-Barre syndrome. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why climbing acute onset of numbness, weakness in the legs, which ascends up, they call it ascending neuropathy. From toes comes up in a matter of 10 days, people can't walk. So the alcohol, that's like a double-edged sword. Some, it has some health benefits, but how much alcohol would, you have to drink a you lot? Know, you know, what happened is, uh, I, is you know, the, the reason alcohol causes neuropathy is basically it has a toxic, is a toxic for the nerves, it kills the neurons. So in it kills the brain, the in the cerebellum, and also the same thing happens, it's, it's toxic for the nerves. But a glass of wine probably won't do it, but too much of that will do it. People who drink heavily, they can tell you. Next day, next night, the feet are tingling or burning. Most of them, they can feel it if they're not drinking that night. Yeah, so, uh, so the usual drink or even two a day probably won't do it? No, probably not. Yes, it's with a balanced diet. If somebody starts to, say they're drinking two drinks a day and they start to get the numbness, would, should they start thinking, well, maybe two drinks is too much for them? Is that one, should they? Yeah, that is uh, one issue. The other issue is make sure they are not, uh, the sugar is not climbing up. Make sure they are not malnourished in terms of vitamin B12 or thiamine or folate. Mm -hmm. Because these are things that in, uh, in conjunction with alcohol really hits on the thiamine and folate. And lowers those levels too, so supplementing those would help them out. What about smoking? Does that have... Um smoking, uh, it doesn't have any direct effect, but it causes vasoconstrictions. By doing that, the small capillaries would constrict. That's poor circulation, 
affects the nerves as well. So the smoking indirectly makes, uh, makes the, ner the arteries or capillaries not work properly. Not work properly. And they don't feed nu nutrients to the nerves, so the nerve. They start having dysfunction, and more than that is peripheral vascular disease, which goes with the smoking, gives them claudication, difficulty with walking. So claudication means they have pain because there's not enough blood going through the going arteries. Going through, to, yes. And so it occurs with activity. So, so the guy starts having some numbness in their feet. Do they go to a doctor right away? What, what, is the, what is the clue that they should seek professional help? You know, probably what I would say is if there is uh, no obvious causes for them, if they're already diabetic, they can see their endocrinologist or family physician, discuss with them if there is it anything to be looked into on top of that, they would refer to us as a neurologist, would check him out. But there is a multiple reason. First of all, we have to look for the causes. Mm -hmm. B12 deficiencies, uh, diabetes, uh, exposure to toxins, malignancies, lung cancer, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, those are other underlying causes. So we need to look at all of those and make sure that, uh, for example, he's diabetic, but mm -hmm. may have the same risk of developing lymphoma or lung cancer as everybody else, probably. So we need to look at all the other causes and start treating those. So causes. the person who's not a diabetic and starts to have this numbness, is it when, they, when it starts to be painful that they should seek help or should, what, what is this? I think from the beginning, if they don't have an obvious cause, they need to see someone who probably, you know, I would say neurologist probably would be the best person, but probably start with the primary care or internist that knows their family history and everything else. And because the reason, you know, you come to my office, you're complaining of numb feet, numb toes. It could be neuropathy, it could be a problem with your spinal cord, mm -hmm. spinal stenosis, it could be a proper problem with your spinal cord in terms of demyelination, inflammation, or it could be central nervous system, multiple sclerosis causes very similar symptoms too. That those needs to be examined, but just clinical examination, you can rule out so who has MS, who has neuropathy, or who I has see. a mix. And then you use tools like this. This is this is, a, this is a simple tool. We, this is an amplifier for our nerve conduction machine, which is a laptop, basically. This is connected to a laptop. It has a, a couple of wires, which as you see, there is three wires. These are recording electrodes. What we do with this, uh, we measure conduction velocity from shoulder down to our to the fingers and the hands. We can measure it from our hip down to our toes in the legs. What we do is we put this electrode, this green is our ground electrode. The red is, for example, a reference which goes on the muscle tendon. And th this is the active electrode, black, which goes on muscle belly. This is a placement for carpal tunnel, which I just put. Which it, we use the stimulator, which kind of uh, delivers a small electric zap, like touching a low voltage battery. There is, we put it on the course of the nerve and we give him a little discharge. By giving the discharge, this muscle goes in spasm. So on the machine, we're gonna see an amplitude, a waveform. When we measure the distance and we put it to the machine, then we move up to the elbow here. We have another zap, we measure the distance, we in put an input in the machine. Then we can go up to the axilla or Arab's point. So we can measure all the way from up to here. Then we calculate how fast the signal travels from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. Based on that, we can say that this nerve is being pinched here elbow or something is wrong higher in the and shoulder. And you can do the same thing in the legs. So we so do the same thing in the legs. So that's very simple. We're almost out of time. So basically, there's things that people can do to prevent a neuropathy, getting their blood sugars down, not smoking, a healthy diet. Healthy diet, exactly. The other thing that I need to mention is infections. Infections, the, you, know, you mentioned about diabetes in the United States. Worldwide, the most common cause of neuropathy is leprosy. Leprosy, wow. That's the most common type worldwide in the globe. Followed by HIV, shingles, oh. and Lyme disease. These are infectious, uh, which are a lot of them are three, almost all of them are treatable now. Yeah, right. So those has to be looked into as well. well that's very interesting to me. Uh, I didn't really even think of infectious diseases. Thanks for coming today, it was a great topic. That's my pleasure, thanks for asking. Yeah.